Hello and welcome back to this course of videos on Node.js. In this video we'll be discussing the global object. And the global object in Node is synonymous to the window object in JavaScript. I'm actually going to be using a uh, client called Git Bash. This is a free download from Git which allows me to use a Linux shell in a Windows environment. So if we just type in Node to execute our uh, the Node executable. Uh, we can now write our node code. Now, first of all, if I just simply type in global, this is going to return to me all of the objects that are attached to the global object, all of the methods. Um, now, we have things like console for console.log, uh, module, things you may recognize such as set interval and uh, set timeout, um, and things we'll discuss later like require and module. Uh, now, to go back to looking at the functionality for the global object let's let's go back and let me just create a variable var animal equals cat now this is actually attached to the global object and we can prove it by typing global dot animal and it's going to return cat now if we if we actually use es6 syntax and we say var bird equals hawk now although this variable is in memory it is not attached to the global object because the es6 uh, syntax let allows us to uh, attach variables to local scope um, however when you use var it attaches to global scope as we just showed so nowadays it's much safer to use let than it is to use var now to look at the other functionality of uh, the, the global object we're going to shift over to a file that I've created uh, in Visual Studio Code called global.js. I'm going to open up this file and this will show us a few other things that the global object can do for us. First of all, we have these two variables, underscore, underscore, der name and underscore, underscore, file name. This gives us the current directory that our file is in and this gives us the actual name of our file. I've been pedantic and prefixed the global uh, the console object uh, with the global object. You don't have to. That was just to prove the point that console is actually a child of the global object. So if I run this file now, in order to run this file, I'm going to go back to my git bash. I'm going to exit out of the um, node REPL because I need in my regular environment for running this file. I need to cd uh, the particular file that I'm in. I, it's in a, a subfolder called code and a subfolder called node. So now I'm actually in that particular folder. I can run my file by typing in node and then the name of the file, which is global. I could say global.js. I don't need to, so I'm not going to. So if I run this now, it's going to return these. Uh, so we have der name re returned the directory that I'm currently in, code node, as we see here. And then file name is going to return the actual full file path. So that's that's great fun. Now the next thing we're going to look at is set timeout, which and this is also a method um, which is uh, a child of the global object. Now what set timeout does is um, it takes two functions. Uh, you may have used it before. So it takes two parameters. The first is the function that you would like it to run. And the second is the amount of time you would like to wait until this function runs. So let's just run this. What, what you'll see when we run this is these two, uh, these two uh, objects will be console.log first of all. And then three seconds later, um, we'll console.log I'm called three seconds later. So let's just run it, uh, run this file here. We'll see the two. Uh, uh, and then three seconds later, we, we console.log here. Now, this is interesting. It isn't just three seconds. What this what this set timeout is doing is it's saying, um, first of all, Node, I want you to exit your current execution context. So basically, any any other code that was written on this page would have to be executed before uh, this set timeout could be called. So we talked previously about um, thread uh, the single threaded non blocking nature of JavaScript. Now this is a good example because um, what this is saying is I set timeout is saying I want you to wait until the next loop. I want you to finish the existing loop that you're working on 
And then, and only then, do I want you to run this uh, this function here. And we can prove this by taking this down to, if I take this down to zero seconds, it is still going to run these two first because it has to execute all this code, uh, exit the execution context, so complete the loop, and then on the next turn of the event loop, then, then this is when this will run. So we can see here, even with zero seconds, if I run this again, you can see that the two, uh, our code here is executed prior to this. Now, a more efficient way of using this is by using something called process.nextTick. So if I actually replace this with process.nextTick, um, it does, it, that, that is very, very similar to using set timeout uh, with zero seconds. Again, it is go, It is saying, okay, wait to the next tick, so the next loop of the event loop before you run me. So you can see here, we're going to get exactly the same output as we did before. Now let me just clear this out so we can see a little better. Um, we're going to run this again. You can see exactly, I'm called on the next loop. This is what process.nextTick does. It's a very useful function, and you'll see it used a lot in Node.js. When we come on to talking things about callback functions, they use this functionality to make sure that the code is executed on the, on the next loop, not the current loop. And that is asynchronous programming for you. Now, one last thing we're going to look at quickly before we go is set interval. Now, set interval is another uh, child of the global object. And, uh, but rather than, excuse me for one second, let me just comment this out. Uh, but rather than like uh, set timeout, set interval repeats. So it's very, very, very similar functionality. However, this is going to be called, uh, this will run ev every second. So I part the first parameter that you pass, exactly the same as set, set timeout is a function that you want to run. And the second one is the number of seconds that you want to wait. However, set interval will be repeating every one second. So if we actually run this file, we will see um, this is going to get called every single second. Now, how am I going to stop this? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to control C out of here. Now, um, the, the, uh, we have a method called clear interval. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an if function. And um, so first of all, I'm going to declare uh, let uh, x equals zero. And now I am going to say, yeah, I'm going to do a, a shortened if function. So if uh, x is greater than four, then I am going to say, uh, going to run the function called clear interval. Now clear interval, it accepts the variable um, that you created for set interval. So I need to pass it. So I'm saying if x is greater than four, I'm going to clear interval. Um, Otherwise, I'm just going to console log, I'm called every second. Uh, so then after my, on my last one of code, I just need to x plus plus because I need to increment. So again, what this is doing, I'm, I'm running my set interval. Um, and what I'm saying is, ev so every one second, it's going to run this code and it's going to increment x by one each time. When x gets greater than four, it's going to run the clear interval method uh, against this. So then it should finish, hopefully. So let's run it here, and we'll see. So I'm called every second. This should run four times. And then the clear interval, uh, there we go. So it runs four times, uh, five, five times, sorry. x is greater than four, so it ran five times. I'm called every second. And then the clear interval um, method was run. So that is, in a nutshell, is the global object in Node.js. I hope to see you in the next video.